Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 38 of Sign of the Dark House, a Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition gothic horror podcast. Because this is gothic horror, there may be some things that come up to a line for some people, uh, such as blood, gore, body horror, talk of abuse and trauma, and other such things. If anything comes up to a line for you, please take a break. Your support is important to us, but so is your mental health. Of course, also this week, we still do not have Arthur. Do Well, we don't have Yofi, the player of Arthur. We have handed the character sheet off to Kyle to do during combat, should that come up or arise. And I will be doing minimal role play, but hopefully we will have Yofi back very soon. So last session, you all got a visit from Dove, who informed you that she had a little conundrum involving a magically enchanted Yeti and an assassination that she needed to do. Instead of producing a body, you all decided to simply reveal the Yeti at an inopportune time, visiting the mass of which Archbishop Sherman would destroy the phylactery of St. Pelias, you successfully unveiled the Yeti, causing it to run after discovering that the altar boy that came along with him was also a Yeti. You tracked the larger Yeti down to an abandoned warehouse where you had a conversation and got some more information about what was going on with him and with Saint Freya, who was apparently intervening. Afterwards, you all managed to wrangle an escort to get the altar boy and uh, Father Freeze, or at least the Yeti impersonating Father Freeze, to be escorted away. And so we are going to start a little bit further on. And I'll let you guys choose either uh, the Kritzvald House or the Shovel and Spade. Uh, we have Shovel and Spade is the vampire one. Yes. Percy votes for his house. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. We didn't <laughs> talk about your aversion to your sexy <laughs> vampire girlfriend. Yeah. All right. So everybody has gathered back at the house. I would say this is probably late afternoon at this point, after the Yeti chase and the escorting and all of that other stuff. You all are in the kitchen or living room, late afternoon. Uh, your mother is still probably at the hospital and the only ones home are your father and um, maybe your sister's there. Maybe she's at the Academy of the Midnight Arts. Um, but you all have a moment of peace. What would you all like to do? Um, <laughs> I guess. Uh, so, do you guys think the Freeze and, and Dimitri are going to be okay? Oh, they're probably dead. Why would you say that? <laughs> Why would, what knowing, <laughs> knowing Dove's character, I don't know. We can only say she, she, she said they wouldn't. Okay. I, Dove is an assassin, but I don't think she's a liar. If you say so. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we've... You just uh, don't the most trustworthy type, if you ask me. Well, maybe we can check on them at some point. Um, yes, oh. I can imagine how that conversation will go. Oh, Dove, how's your new Yeti fur rug? Is it comfortable? <laughs> you're just, you're just cruel. You know that you're just a cruel little man. Oh, um, he would. She would have one rug and a pillowcase. <laughs> um. See, okay. Well, Percy, honestly, you you tell me I'm cruel all the time, but I don't think you've ever known true cruelty. 
We could that is not that. a reassuring thing to say, Lark. <laughs> that is... Yeah. Okay, well, we, we destroyed... We destroyed the phylactery. That went well. Um, the Yeti thing happened. Uh, do we have any any more business we need to conduct in Darkmore? I say I'm, I I, th I want to be like I, I sprinkling fertilizer on top of Rosie or something <laughs> as we're talking. <laughs> and Rosie just goes. <laughs> Um, oh, we still have a head. Uh, oh, yes. yeah. I'll, I'll try to get in touch with them tonight to figure out what to do with that. Okay. Well, then we have the third phylactery to look for. Uh, yes. Mm. Uh, so... Sorry, but the commonality between the first two we found, they were both at your family's home. So yeah. what do you forget? We'll find number three there too. Yeah, almost certainly. Uh, so should we return in the morning? We could return in the morning, though. Perhaps sooner or later we could. Now just go on this adventure with me, everyone. <laughs> One of your saints is actually capable of physically manifesting somewhat on the material plane right now. And she's sending awakened yetis to try getting help to the poor frozen clutches of Lockjaw because they're caught in the throes of a hag problem that Arthur already wants to deal with. And I wouldn't mind investigating exactly what they're up to either someday. So, should we put the phylacteries on pause, then? I don't know if I put them on pause, necessarily, but I don't believe it would behoove us to tunnel vision ourselves too much on one goal at a time without thinking about the whole. Because imagine the aid that you could get, and if you could, you know, actually speak to one of your distant saints who bothers appearing here. Because as far as, from my perspective, as far as I've heard so far, none of them have except this one. Worth investigating for reals? Do you think Freya will be angry with us? That is if she, I don't think she is anything to fear, only if she's like a real saint. No, I mean, we sort of screwed her plans over. <laughs> Did we, though? Hopefully, the church has been forced into action to send help over there. Thanks to us. Well, they were going to kill the yetis if we hadn't stepped in, so... All right. Uh, I... I'm not against the idea of uh, taking a little time away from the house if we want to go to Lockjaw. I'm, I'm okay with going there. I mean, in, if you believe, if you think that we can afford it, I'd be more than happy to go. Because imagine yet again, the help if we could leverage helping her out, do you think she'd be willing to help us out with the problems that we already face? Ooh. Uh, perhaps. Uh, my concern here is, do you think we're ready to fight a bunch of burr hags? Mm. I'll, I'll seek counsel tonight if I can manage to get through to back home and see what everyone else's opinions on the matters are. Okay. Um, then we can decide in the morning. Okie dokie. Long rest. Oh, I, I'm going to take my head back. <laughs> Fine. And I guess I'll try to contact my psychic friends network. 
Hello? <laughs> yes. Um, you kind of call out in the night in your fey ways to the queen of air and darkness and you wait. And once again, another one of the bitter bloom flowers grows up from the roof and opens. So it seems a variety of things have happened since I last checked in. Yes, uh, yes, my lady. Um, so many developments, I don't even know where to start. We've explored more of the house, run into more aberrations left and right, and oh, apparently a sliver of my soul is trapped in the shadow fell. How disgusting is that? Hmm, yes, that is inconvenient. Oh, um, so turns out these idiot mortals, some of them were trying to summon a horrible world devouring aberration. Um, Guys, above game, what's what 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 what, what was it? There is Dune, I think. There is Dune, the devouring madness or hunger. He eats worlds, and they were trying. There's some liches. We've destroyed a few phylacteries. Haven't run into any liches yet, my lady. But I mean, they invite their own destruction. They're such fools. This is quite concerning. I have heard that name before. I believe there is Dun devoured the world that Zugdmoy and Jubilex came from. That is all I know, but if it is terrible enough to make them afraid, we should all be afraid. And yet some of these fool mortals try to bind it and use its powers for their own foolish ends. Idiots, all of them. Do you know they've an entire prison full of aberrations crept, caught up in gems over here? Quite, quite, quite foolish. This is concerning. Well, I thank you for this information. One of their worldly, one of the saints they worship is trying to gain aid for dealing with a coven of hags, though these are affiliated with Gryla, my lady. They're not the mm. ones that we ran into affiliated with the witch queen. Shall I twist the party's pinky and point them in that direction or head back to the house? What would better serve your needs? Perhaps finding a way to receive, to retrieve that portion of your soul would be the most important. I cannot have a servant that cannot travel between my realm and this one. Yes, yes, my lady, I will, I suppose the better, the better option then is to get them to go back to the house tomorrow. Oh, oh, also, when we were hunting down phylacteries, my lady, I, I found this, I'm, I don't suppose anyone back home could have you, I just, he just holds up the decapitated celestial's head. He's just going to be like, D would anyone back home have use for this? I know Granther loves a good piece of a body and who knows what he could grow out of it or if you would want it it is a fallen angel ah quite a powerful bargaining chip hmm perhaps baba yaga or the witch queen would use it in the fight against gryla perhaps either way i accept this offering you may simply throw it over the edge of the house. Oh. Yeet. Head yeet. 
as the head flies over the roof, you suddenly hear the thundering of hooves. And galloping down the street, catching the head in the air by the long hair, is a headless humanoid riding a horse. The horse is wreathed in black flames as it continues galloping, an unearthly neigh echoes into the night. You would recognize this as a Dulahan. They are undead, but they are one of the rare undeads that do exist in the Feywild. They're typically servants, typically champions or knights in a way of unseelie court, um, archfey, nobles, and other such uh, things. They are rare, but they exist. And this Dulahan rides off into the night, vanishing back into the Feywild and into the darkness. It is always my pleasure to find interesting things for you back home. It's why I live here now, after all. Yes, you've been quite helpful. I will make sure that you are well rewarded. I do have a little information for you. I have a couple of servants that are quite quick at getting information. You may want to talk to your cleric friend. I believe there's an artifact, a um, relic, the mortals call it, in the Darkmoor Cathedral that may help with your ends of retrieving your soul from the Shadowfell. Perhaps it is an option, but if you have other routes that you prefer to take, whichever will get you there. As you, as you will, my queen. Oh, um, also, uh, it, it hasn't been really that much of a problem, but um, the hag coven that we ran into before, one of them tattled to Arthur about me serving you and wants him to travel back to the Feywild and try to steal a, a rose out of um, the Seelie Princess's garden. It's on his to-do list. I didn't make him any deals, which is why he told the rest of the party that I serve you. Hmm. Unfortunate, so but not necessarily uh, a hindrance. Well, I will certainly have those hags dealt with. I cannot have them running around causing any more trouble for you or for me. But if they are aware, then perhaps I will be less cautious about sending my servants round to ask you for favors. I, they are aware of your title, at least. I haven't, I've told them as much as they need to know about- Of course. About. Yes. And I guess they would have found out anyway, as I'm sure you will be bringing them to the Waltz of Shadows. That was on, that was one of my plans for them, depending on how things went. I thought so. They would have found out eventually. Better that they know now. True. Unfortunate, but a necessity. Well, I have many more things to attend to, and I bid you good night. And the flower withers and turns to dust that vanishes. <sighs> yeah, Mark's just gonna take a minute to be like, oh, thank God I'm not smit, I wasn't smote or whatever, and just fly <laughs> to his room. The night otherwise goes by peacefully. Those of you that might be awake or be awoken by loud sounds may have heard a horse galloping. 
down the street in the night and an unearthly neigh. But otherwise, the night goes by uneventfully and the morning comes. So what would you all like to do now that you are presumably all up and eating breakfast? Um, so Lark, what did, um, did your queen have to say? Um, well, she told me that it would probably be in my best interest for us to focus on going to the Shadowfell first. And uh, what does that mean? Uh, oh, yes. Um, apparently there's a relic in your cathedral that could help us there. It's an avenue to get there. Do you have relics that tie to the land of the dead there? Give me a religion check. <laughs> sure. And I would also say due to the nature of it and who it's connected to, I'll give you advantage on that religion Ooh. check. Okay. Check what my modifier is. I think it's going to be good. Yeah. Uh, that is 17. You remember St. Golgotha, especially the statue of her, is oftentimes depicted with a bell. She was also known for miracles involving speaking with the dead, and it's even rumored that she went to the land of the dead several times. Her miracles oftentimes surround these sorts of things. There is also a claim made by Archbishop Sherman, that this bell is in the cathedral's possession. It is possible that the bell was what was used to access the underworld, in a sense. And it's possible that the relic still has that power. Um, so does, does uh, I expect, is the shadow felt like, is what is it what we would call like the realm of the dead? Are you asking that to me? Yeah, to, to, to Lark, to... yeah. <laughs> um, well, I I suppose because above game he did pass like a nature or something check back when it was revealed. Yes. Because of his nature of the interplanar things, he's just gonna be like the shadow fell is in a way, in a sense, the opposite of the Feywild. One, well, they're both tied quite strongly to the mortal plane, unfortunately. One being closer to the negative plane and one being closer to the positive plane. The Shadowfell is the negative side where apparently, according to the Druid, the souls of your dead pass through on their way to visit some death goddess. Um, which, is yet again goes back to that whole I actually died here. How fucking disgusting is that? <laughs> and yet somehow you brought me back without even knowing it. Uh, I, yeah, I, I don't, I didn't think you were dead. <laughs> Perhaps so, you just don't know Fey Anatomy that well to recognize the signs of death. Sure, sure, that's, yeah. Um, well, I don't know a lot about, you know, the positive and negative planes of existence, but I do know that St. Golgotha is rumored to, well, have, have had the ability to traverse between the realms of living and dead. And supposedly it was through the use of, of her bell, the, 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 like the bell that we saw in the statue. Um, it's a legendary artifact that the uh, Bishop Sherman claims to have in the cathedral. Well, according to my lady, he does. I, well, that, that's good news, but also I can't imagine Bishop Sherman being willing to part with such an important relic of his saint. 
who says he'll part with it? You just need to borrow it for a little while, Percy. Come on, you need to learn to be a little more persuasive. <laughs> um, we can ask him. <laughs> After everything we've done for that man in recent days. I mean, he kind of did something for us, really. <laughs> we asked and, that. And thing. then we unleashed a yeti in his cathedral. So <laughs> we also prevented all of his acolytes from turning into feral demonic entities that were intent on destroying each other and his flock. We we did do that, but which that's... would destabilize his entire religious hierarchy and leave him out of power. So a little bit of blackmail can get us there too, if you don't like trying to be persuasive. I don't really want to blackmail Archbishop Sherman. He's a nice man. Are you sure? A little bit of blackmail is always fun. I think of it more of a fair trade than a blackmail. Rarick's on my level. You need to get there too. <laughs> okay, we can talk to him. That's all I can say. <laughs> oh, also, um, I did inform the Queen about Ferris Dune and the liches and all the good stuff going on there. Okay. Did any of those books mention that Theris Dune's already eaten the planets that spawned two demon lords? Um, yes, actually, I think I think they did. Yes. So at least the greater planes at large are aware that your family tried dragging him down here. Good. Is that a good thing? Oh, I didn't name you by name. I just called you all foolish mortals. Okay. Um, so do you want to go talk to the Archbishop then? We're sure are just dropping in on him a lot lately. I feel like we're supposed to probably schedule an appointment or something, but, um, let's go talk to him. We's back, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> he's just like, sees us, he's like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> So you head back through the morning light to the cathedral once again. And back in, there is a mass going on given by somebody else for some other saint, but you can easily slip by in the aisles on the side to behind the altar where his office is. Archbishop Sherman is leafing through notes presumably for next week's sermon or perhaps for other reasons, but he is still in his office where he usually is. Um, Archbishop Sherman. Um, hello. Uh, hello. I presume that yesterday went uh, as well as it could have. Yes. So we're very appreciative of, of you working with us, um, it, as far as we can tell, is the Phylactery has been destroyed. And um, the Yetis, what of that whole situation? Once again, Percy just kind of backs up behind Lark and allows you to do the, the finessing of that. <laughs> Some of your fellow clergy have taken the Yetis into their custody to sort that out. How are you feeling, Archbishop? It must have been rather taxing, exercising the evil of a lich's phylactery. Are you all right? Yes, I'm, I'm doing as well as I can have. Um, I'm currently trying to sort out a, uh, a glasswork artist to replace the stained glass window. Um, well, but otherwise, everything seems to be going as planned. There is no ill effect on me. Uh, nothing lingering inside Great. of the cathedral, as far as we are aware. Great, because we will need your help again. Yes, darling, just as my friend Rarick said, we, we find ourselves in need of a help that only you can provide us. Seems you've been coming hands. to me with a lot of those these days. <laughs> yeah. Well, darling, haven't we helped you, though? We you have. 
which is oh, why no. I am not uh, telling you to leave this instant. I am hearing you out. Great. Um, go ahead, tell them. <laughs> I've received a rather troubling news that a sliver of my soul is trapped in the shadow fell. But fortunately, someone back home was very kind and informed me that you would have a relic that could transport us there temporarily to retrieve it. Um, I assume you're talking about um, St. Golgotha's bell. Is, is that it, Percy? Yes, yes, St. Golgotha's Bell. <sighs> well, you have done quite a bit, and I am aware of the work that you are currently attempting to do, and All right, I will allow you to use the relic as long as I can accompany you for enough time to guarantee that this relic is not going to be lost. If we use the relic to go there, how do we return is my question. Does the relic have to come with us and therefore you? I'm entirely unaware. It's no one except for St. Golgotha has used it, at least not in that manner. It's been used by other people before, but more to simply speak with dead people, not to travel to the lands of the dead. From my gathering of her holy scriptures, she would use it by a river to summon a boatman that would row her across the realm to the lands of the dead along a river that runs to the shadow fell. I am unsure if she needs to take the bell with her or if it simply summons the boatman and returning to the boatman will allow you to return here. Perhaps that is something to take up with the boatman. But either way, I will be accompanying the artifact as long as you need it. I cannot have something this valuable, this connected to divinity, simply lost and perhaps used in less than trustworthy hands. You wound me, Archbishop. I oh, wasn't I speaking about you, I was speaking about people who wish to retrieve the souls of those who should not return, the souls of evil mortals. <clears throat> you are going to receive your, retrieve your own and however I may feel about you, I must say you have done work for the church. I cannot turn down this for you and since that is the only soul you are going to retrieve i am somewhat at peace with it it sounds better than trusting whatever percy's ancestors left behind to get there well if the stories i've heard are true there's much worse ways to end up in the shadow fell. Well. That isn't the fastest way just to die here? Yes, it is, but then you are bound to go to the afterlife unless we use magic to return you, but I don't think you can bring anything with you. If you wish to bring something with you, you must go there corporeally. Mm. But I will, when you 
are prepared enough to go to the Shadowfell. I will bring the bell and we will meet at a river or a source of flowing water, which I can use this. Now we use it and we will cross whatever bridge we come up against. That sounds good. Um, thank you. Yes. Yes. Thank you. I assume you have a lot to prepare for, as do I, since there is a possibility I will need to accompany you through the land of the dead, and so I will be preparing. I suggest you do the same. Uh, right. We we we'll go do that. So from here, where would you like to go? Um, how much time do we have till we do that shit? <laughs> Until we're ready, I guess. <laughs> he did say, when you're ready, come and get me. It's not a time limit thing. It's simply. OK. So like, what... after we're out of like the room with him, Mark's going to be like, he was so tense with me. <laughs> um, I, I guess I, I don't, I didn't notice. <laughs> um, are you guys ready to go or? We should is, probably prepare. Is there anything in particular we should get? How much does any of us truly know about the shadow fell? Should we ask people about it? I Perhaps we should do a little research and figure out what may or may not be helpful to take with us first. I just had a vision of it and what I heard back home and the little bits and pieces I know. Lark, if you'd like to make a nature check, you may. Nature check. I'm actually not good at these. Nature check. Where's my dice bag? There's my dice bag. Because Lark doesn't have a good modifier for intelligence. That's a six. Oh, I rolled new portents. It's an 18 and a 20. Oh, give, me, nice. give me a good portent. <laughs> I'm having a great day with portents today. Can I have one? So I don't take a yes. Pick. Okay, which one do I get? You pick. It's gonna take eighteen. Okay, this twenty is gonna stay. I got an eighteen. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so as you know, the shadow fell and the Fey Wild are oftentimes described as mirrors of each other, although they aren't specifically mirrors, but they are tied to strongly to emotion. A lot of times, emotions in the Feywild are very positive and very um, enchanting. And so mortals that go there, if they aren't careful, get lost or stuck there or never want to leave due to the euphoric feelings that they feel themselves fall under. Presumably, the Shadowfell functions in the same way. And there are horrible fates awaiting those who lose themselves to whatever emotions the Shadowfell might foist upon them. Other than that, you aren't aware. You know, in the Feywild, sometimes lost people simply remain human, but simply cannot feel sadness or are unaware of home. Some lose track of time to the point where if they were to return, they would decay instantly. Some transform into fairies themselves, being twisted by the magic of the Feywild, and some simply undergo physical transformations, not becoming Fey, but returning with perhaps cat ears, feathers, tails, their skin changing color, their eyes changing color or shape or type. There's a variety of things that can happen. Presumably there are things that happen in the Shadowfell and 
attempting to uh, steel yourself against those possibilities would probably be the best option. Although what those are, you don't know. Uh, okay, so yeah, so Lark will just be like, well, if Shadowfell is anything like back home, we should best prepare your mental fortitudes. Those who, mortals who wind up in the Feywild have a tendency of forgetting where they came from and what they came for. And if you wind up forgetting for too long or being distracted for too long, time can move differently, very differently. And if you come back, sometimes time catches up with you rather rapidly. It's quite entertaining to watch someone go from being an 18 year old spry young thing to a pile of dust in a minute when they walk through a portal. I've only seen it once though, personally. Um, so yes. Okay, well, how do we have that not happen? Well, we just have to be careful and keep track of time. It's a fickle thing back home, so I imagine it might be a little fickle in the shadow fell. Though at the end of the day, if the two of them are akin to mirrors or sisters or sides of a coin or whatever parable or metaphor you want to describe to them, we, we have to be careful about what we think and what we feel there and to know that the world itself could be a giant trap. Good, okay, that's fine. So, that's all fine. Fair. Some some lucky souls who wind up getting caught in the honey trap of the Fey Wild get turned into Fey themselves. It's the best thing that could happen to any of you, honestly. Uh, something tells me that the shadow fell. I w I wouldn't turn into a cute little fairy. Probably not. Though maybe it'll turn you into a vampire, so you can finally consummate your vampire marriage. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, don't worry, Percy. You'd look cute with a pair of fangs. Because all the vampires you've met have been real cute. <laughs> Svetlana? She's only half vampire, I know. Or is she? Yeah, she's half vampire. Mm -hmm. Found out she was a dumb peer. Did you know that? She's not even a full vampire, just a half vampire. Oh, good. Well, I'll, I'll write that down on my list of things about Svetlana. <laughs> right underneath, I love her with all of my heart. <laughs> So yes, what, what I'm trying to say here is that the shadow fell, if it is anything like home, will try to feed off of you as much as you walk through it and try to keep you there. Well, maybe are there, are there potions or magical objects or something that could give us some sort of fortitude or something? Would I know if there's anything like that that could help them? Um, there's a variety of really anything that affects your your mood. It could be as simple as singing a song or other simple non-magical things to kind of keep you in a certain emotional state. Meditation or other such things, you could find incredibly powerful magics, like perhaps the mind blank spell might work. But generally it is entirely about mood control and keeping on task. That is the best thing that you can do. So yeah, so in character, Lark's just gonna be like, well, pardoning anyone developing extremely powerful mental magics at this point, the best we can hope for is to stay on task and train your mind. A little meditation, a little mental fortitude, I suppose. Also, probably shouldn't eat any food that anyone offers us there, just to be on the safe side. All right. Um, well, do we need do we need to actually what are we what are we preparing then? What are we what are we waiting for? I suppose we should 
maybe take some rations, depending on how long we're going to be there, to avoid eating anything that's growing there. All right, we can we can go get some food. And Rarick, what do you have any any ideas on your end before we plunge into the land of shadows? Excuse me. Um, <laughs> can you hear me? Um, no. Yes, we can hear I, you. I can't think of anything. Although I do kind of want to look into it at the library or like the academy or uh, like inquire That's about funny. it. Um, okay. Should we just take a day to meditate <laughs> and Rerick can go do some reading? You can go to the spa again if you want. <laughs> oh, sh shit. I feel like this might be the shittiest thing to do because Yofi's not here, but like, if anyone in the party needs to work on their mental fortitude, it's the one who had a blue screen of death mid session at one point in character. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah I just, mean I mean person literally have voices in his head, so yeah. Can you ask them questions? Can you like communicate back to those voices? Yeah, I can, but usually they just they, they'll tell me they'll tell me what I want to know if I let them out. So just lie uh, to them. <laughs> Honestly, those voices could be a great knife in your back pocket while we're there. What? Well, depending on <laughs> if they want you to be trapped in the shadow fell forever and therefore them with it, you might be able to leverage that so can that you can help keep your mind steady. Can you release them in the shadow realm? The shadow fell? In no, the I shadow think, world? I think the only way to release them is to go back to the to where they're trapped. Oh. But I'm just saying it could be having an extra voice or two in your head that you already know is there and you know who put it there probably won't hurt you or hurt yeah. you through the shadow. Sure. Well, I mean, I wouldn't trust them necessarily, but Percy, you have to understand that if it's anything like home, it's going to be full of smoke, mirrors, and tricks and some of them are going to be very tempting or somehow keep you there. I'm curious of what frequency the Shadowfell is going to vibe with mostly. As, as, you, as you mortals say, as you vibe. What's the vibe? Right. Um, well, I don't think anyone in this era <laughs> says that. Why don't we just... Why don't we just it's take the day? just using like great great grandparents slang. <laughs> Nobody says vibe anymore. <laughs> using, like the last mortal I hung out with used to say vibe all the time. Love to think that like vibe and yeet and all of these other modern words are ancient Isn't it vocabulary. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow, the sign of the dark house is set ten thousand years into the future. Well, there yeah. are some fantasy universes yeah. that are actually that actually do that. Yeah, <laughs> it's Earth, but twenty thousand years in the future, and somehow return to magic. It's weird. I don't really like those, but anyway, that's not this. <laughs> <laughs> so, what are you planning on doing? I think library, right, library? I'm library. not sure if I want to go and ask Mister Maximilian something if he knows anything about that or if we want to go to the library because if we just search in the library how about the library where that demon works at that is also in the staff of night uh, i don't think he means my house yeah <laughs> oh <clears throat> i mean we i guess we could <sighs> I don't know. There's like a lot of options for some reason. <laughs> um, let's just ask someone directly. 
if they know anything about it, um, probably a professor, Professor Max. Um, What's his last name? Do it. Do we want to talk to the sorcery professor, like the planar professor? Which one? There's, there's got to be like a necromancy or something professor. <laughs> the shadow fell studies. There is a necromancy department that yeah. exists. Or um, like planar, planar expertise. Someone with planar expertise. There is most likely that. You have met some interesting professors that teach things outside of the eight schools of magic. You know you Odessa some... Dim Witch, who is teaches about uh, magical relics. There's a literal school we can learn from. <laughs> yep. Where you can just conjure up a character if you want. Yeah, I know. I'm already th- thinking up names. <laughs> All right, <laughs> should we go? Mark, yeah. Do Mark's this. Just, cool. Mark's just like, let's go to school. I told yeah. you what. I- yeah, let's do that. Also, let's tell Maximilian that we already destroyed them. Or Odessa. Odessa? Is that yes. her name? Yes. Yeah. Odessa Dimwich. Uh, ah. Who Percy hasn't met yet. No. Oh, shit. Well, that, she's the one that told us to told us how to destroy the phylactery. Cool. He's also the so, one who found out about the chains of Thera's Dune there. We didn't tell her directly, but when she did her fancy identify, she found out. <laughs> yeah. She mm-hmm. could have warned me, and we were like, we didn't want you to get involved. Yeah. These, these, this academy is literally our Google. So we can. So we let's can, stay. sure. Let's go let's, to the staff overnight. So wait, let's if go. this academy is our Google, who's our TSA agent who keeps track of our Google accounts? That would be Spencer. Did you mean CIA agent? CIA. What's TSA? Oh, t- the, the, airport the airport. people. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness, you're going through the TSA search. Should we allow you on the plane? You've had some very interesting Google searches. Yeah. Well, let's go. Let's go get and see if we yeah. can find someone who can answer our questions. All right. So you head back to the Staff of Night, the very familiar location. It seems that people there recognize you. You guys slip in quite easily and manage to get your way up to the library. Um, And you can pretty easily start to just look for books. Um, There are definitely uh, students around that you can speak to, flipping to the notes that I have on the staff, at the Staff of Night. Um, But you are currently in the library. So if all of you can give me investigation checks. Woohoo. 26. Ooh. 20. Dang. I got 50. Percy got a seven. You want to use my 20? <laughs> <laughs> you already got a nat 20. You do it. Yeah, but I have a. <laughs> Important 20. <laughs> we can save 20. that first. <laughs> yeah. What does Rarick find? <laughs> um, so there are definitely a lot of books on the Shadowfell. Um, there are books on communities in the Shadowfell. There are books on cities and maps of the Shadowfell. There is a lot of information You do also find similar companion books for the Feywild as well. You find books on uh, the biology of creatures from the Shadowfell as well as from the Feywild, plant life, um, and other such things. You, Lark, do manage to find similar books, 
mostly higher up on the shelves. Um, and Percy, you are <laughs> with your six. You decide to go and ask for help <laughs> and run into the librarian by the name of Mikhail Lustrum, who in a very strange twist of events in a similar manner to Maximilian Dupree is a beaver who can talk and use magic. Lots of animals in this place. <laughs> yes. Apparently it's a very interesting thing that some wizards as they get older are a bit bizarre. And some of them have a weird... Oh, so he just chooses to be a beaver. <laughs> yeah, he just chose to be a beaver. There, there are some for professors <laughs> who have just chosen to become animals. They can still do magic and they can still talk, but they have transformed themselves into animals. Uh, the librarian being one of them. Uh, and it is just such a shocking sight to see a beaver walking around the library dealing with books that it's a bit distracting and <laughs> yeah. only really come back with a book on the primer of the various planes that exist to the two of them with their stacks of books and huge maps that are rolled out. Um, there is a lot on the Shadowfell. You find that there are very large cities in the Shadowfell that are entirely populated by undead. You find that because the Shadowfell is connected so closely to the negative plane and the energies of the negative plane are what fuel necromancy that most of the undead, unless provoked, will typically not attack you. They are vampires in that realm do not necessarily need to drink blood to survive. Zombies do not need to eat human flesh. Creatures like whites and will-o'-the-wisps do not need to suck essence from people and ghosts do not need to take years off of people's lives by frightening them in order to survive. They, are, they have a constant food source. That doesn't mean that they won't be unfriendly. It doesn't mean that they will not attack you. It just means that their hunger is not the thing that drives them. Additionally, there are communities of non-dead things that live in the Shadowfell. One group is particularly prevalent known as the Shadar Kai. They are divided into various tribes that in a similar way to elves that live in the Feywild, they each have their own sort of culture and their own beliefs and communities and other such things. There is, let me see if I can actually find exactly where I wrote it down because it is important. Um, do, 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 do. Oh my God, where did I write it down? Um, ah, there is the, the communities are centered around animals. There is the Raven clan, the Owl clan, the Bat clan, the Dark Mantle clan, and the Moth clan. Other than that, there are other beings such as uh, drow that make them that make their way there, dark elves, um, dwargar, or dark dwarves that make their way down from the underdark, and zverfniblin, or dark gnomes. Of course, mostly being populated by the undead, not a lot is edible there. It takes a lot of magic to keep making food in order to survive. Additionally, there is a river that goes through the Shadowfell, the River Styx. 
and it runs directly through the place where it is at least rumored to be the City of Tears, which you would recognize. It is on the map and it does seem to have a permanent location. There is a lot of stuff about mists that travel through the Shadowfell, banks of fog and mist that when people enter them, sometimes they vanish altogether and sometimes they end up somewhere else in the Shadowfell. There are people that can walk through them and end up where they wish to be, meaning that distances are not quite the same. But there are permanent landmarks, such as the City of Tears, um, the city of Evernight, which is one of the biggest cities in the Shadowfell, and things of that nature. There is also a couple of pieces of advice for traversing in the Shadowfell. There are authors that say a lot of various um, sort of tactics, meditation to keep your mind clear, um, tea as well to keep your self calm and even bringing lots of chocolate for endorphin rushes and things of that nature. Some of them are painful such as pricking yourself or eating incredibly spicy peppers uh, to keep focused on pain in the moment as opposed to longer, more emotional stuff that the shadow fell tends to throw. But with those high rolls, those are that's the information that you get about the shadow fell. So, like, can we all but confirm that one of the big sources for the shadow fell is like sorrow? Yes, sorrow, grief, um, sadness, mm -hmm. loss, confusion, hatred, loathing regret, things of that are emotions that the world tends to feed off of as opposed to joy, euphoria, happiness, giddiness, curiosity, and other things like that that the Feywild tends to feed off of. Cool. <clears throat> so apparently we need to think happy thoughts. get some tea <laughs> um okay so do you know where your soul would be it's I'm gonna, i'll use mage hand to like <laughs> point directly at the map it's in the city that is it citadel or city of tears the city of tears specifically it is in one of the gardens in the cathedral of tears it's which is in, in the center of the city it's in a garden within the center of the City of Tears, the Cathedral of Tears. It's in one of their gardens. Oh, actually, now that I... Hmm. Yeah, it's somewhere in there, based on the vision that we had with the druid over at the bathhouse. That's where it's at. Great, great. Um... That sounds awful. Shit, I've been muted. Um, do we know if the river sticks go through that uh, or go by the city of tears? It cuts directly through it. Oh hell yeah! Okay, so what we have to do is go and summon Chiron, Kieran, whatever, and go there through the river. It looks like. Okay. Just keep our wits about us and apparently don't wander through any mist. That's no. quite novel. Great. We'll have to we'll keep an eye out for for mist. <laughs> Should I be able to get rid of the mists? Let's see. Is this something that we can negate? From what you've read, it's just a thing that happens. These banks of mist come up, roll through, roll away. Sometimes they stay, sometimes they don't. 
It's just a part of the shadow fell. Oh right. Lord. Okay. So our 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 best safest option is to get in and get out as quickly as possible. No dilly dallying, no wandering about, unless one of you wants to wind up trapped in a spiral of negative emotions and pain and sorrow for the rest of eternity, which could be a little entertaining for me, but. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, this place reminds me of parts of home, too. So, back home, most do feed off of the happier times, in general. The people there are called Shadow Fae. So, makes sense. Um, how, how do you feel? Do you not feel any effect from having part of your soul in there? I feel as... Well, I mean, I've felt that the mortal plane has been a sad sack reflection of where I'm from the whole time, but I just thought it was part of being trapped on the mortal plane. Okay. It's because I'm missing a piece of my soul. Am I broken? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm perfect, darlings. I've... Okay. I wonder if it has changed me at all, though. Well, I don't know. We'll see once we retrieve that part of you. you seem the same to me. I think we will see once we retrieve it and you merge back with it. We would know. Mm. I do remember in my vision it was crying, which is so not me. See? Ugh, pathetic. Maybe that piece of your soul is where your empathy is. Maybe that's why you've been so mean this entire time. Yes, maybe it has been that this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Mark's going to say that completely straight in character. <laughs> Not the way I just said it. <laughs> I'm imagining it that way, to be honest. Oh. Uh. oh well, I'm just I'm just grateful to finally figure out why I, why I'm stuck here, and to sort this bit of a bother out. Because the sooner that I can go between places, well, the better off we'll all be in terms of interplanar communication, I suppose. Oh, also, my lady may occasionally send messages in front of the three of you now, just a heads up. I did inform her that the hags tattled me out to Arthur, so she's going to maybe spontaneously be a little less discreet than we have been so far. I hope everyone likes Headless Horsemen. Ooh. Hmm? Are they headless? You've never seen a Dullahan, darling. Dullahan. A what? Dullahan. Do you read books? Not those ones. <laughs> So, yeah, in the Feywild, we, we are closer to the positive plane, but some of us do drift more towards the negative at times, and Dulahan are undead that serve the Fey, particularly the Archfey that are a little bit on the darker side. And you know that my queen's title is the Queen of Nightmares. Do the math, Percy. She's was, evil. Uh... You, Jesus Christ. You work for an evil queen. <laughs> just made me fucking jump. <laughs> I was about to say something. <laughs> Darling, Arthur told you this weeks ago. I didn't know she was a nightmare queen. <laughs> he literally told you that I serve the queen of nightmares. I thought he was just being facetious. I don't know, Arthur is right here. <laughs> Why don't you ask I Arthur? I wasn't. <laughs> Suddenly speaking after hours of reading books, I wasn't. No. You... Had you... Had... Percy, you sweet, sweet summer child. <laughs> you you thought that it was it's one of the titles you mortals have ascribed to her. Well, so well, what, what, is, what does that mean? Are you are you just are you just running around being an evil? An evil person? 
Killing people with things? It's what have those seeds, seeds been doing, Lark? What are the seeds? They're everything I told Arthur they were. They're gifts from the Fae that bring our attention. Oh, wait, that's right. You're the only one who doesn't really know anything. <laughs> <laughs> Just realize <laughs> about the fairies thing. Okay. Ooh. Did, did, did you ever give Percy a seed? <laughs> no. no. Okay. Lark has purposefully never given anyone in the party a seed. <laughs> okay. See, I. Oh my God. This is so, this is. This is so not. This conversation is not over. Also, this is weird. You, you've been evil the whole time. This is. This is just Percy, everything. This Percy, is everything. <laughs> Percy, how does it feel to be on that side? Oh my God. God, <laughs> Percy just walks, storms off. <laughs> oh. And then I high five Arthur. <laughs> <laughs> high darling, five. darling. Sure. <laughs> please, please spare me your moralities. We don't have the same systems back home. It's not my fault I wound up serving someone who feeds off of fear at times. It's just where I was born. Oh. And I have no... Can, can't you just... Be nice? Can't you just decide to be a nice one? I've been nice to most mortals we've met compared to what some of my family and friends would be to them. I've never needlessly antagonized anyone. If anything, I've done nothing but help you mortals out since I've been here. I'm really just looking out for all of you. Relatively speaking, he's been nice. (laughs) I'm not the one who voted to leave an entire community to a coven of hags. That was the three of you. I mean, I literally burnt an entire family of moss people. Percy, darling, just don't go on a journey with me thinking that everything has to be black and white. There's so many shades of gray. I, I guess. Just, I don't know, maybe, maybe just don't feel on nightmares. Maybe you, can, maybe you can find something else. I was, I was the one who purposefully went after nightmares. It's just some of my kin do. And as these books point out, most of them do the happier things. But that's boring. And I'll be anything in my life but boring. I love how Lark's just going on to a cru- Disney's Cruella monologue. <laughs> 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 Mark uh, is just suddenly Emma Stone in Disney's Cruella. <laughs> <laughs> I have to be fabulous. I just go, mm-hmm. hey, I, I, <laughs> I, 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 I guess I, I don't get what you are or anything about fairies at and all. I don't so. understand why mortals put their faith in distant gods who never appear before them. Who only give them, who send yetis to eat their followers. Come on. Um, And besides for that, your family, no offense there, Percy, but when it comes to mortal motivations, your family has literally invited a world devourer. They they have done fucked up. So how about, isn't there a mortal parable or fey foible, whatever you call it, about people in glass houses not throwing stones. <laughs> Just... <sighs> okay, okay, fine. I maybe you could teach us about what you are, so we could understand it better. Well, I've been teaching you the whole time, dear. It's not my fault if you're not paying attention. <laughs> okay. Yep. All right. I'm. Lark, I'm I, 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 <laughs> very seriously look in your eyes and put my hand on your little fairy shoulders. I trust you, and I'm going to take you at your word that you're a good person. And I think I know you well enough to believe that. So I'm, I'm my definition of good. I don't know if I'm your definition of good there, church boy. You're making this very hard. <laughs> <laughs> I I live by my own code I have this whole time and I just don't want you to have these preconceived notions and try to hold it against me one day 
I am who I am. And it's up to you whether or not you can accept that. Okay, okay. Just, just, just don't eat nightmares and stuff and we'll be fine. <laughs> you really need to buckle up if I'm ever going to take you to the Waltz of Shadows. Oh, we've we've talked about that in character before, right? I think, you, I think you've mentioned it. You mentioned <laughs> yeah. it in passing. Yeah. We have I guess a Arthur at this to the Waltz of Shadows, Percy, where literal demon and devil lords congregate with Archfey of the Unseely Court. If you oh. want to go to that, you need you need to develop some tact, darling. You know, I don't know if I want to go to that. <laughs> that, that, that sounds like um, a very good way to get killed very quickly. <laughs> Not if you're on your best behavior. There are certain rules of decorum at these events. Oh. Okay. Um, sure. Sure, we'll... I'm Why don't we just focus on getting your soul back, and then we yes, can talk so about... we can attend, but just putting... Evil I'm, waltz. I'm putting the... I'm planting the seed in your mind, as it were. Just a different sort of flower. But just... Just... You need to lighten up there, darling. Just lighten up a little. Okay. Okay, I'm uh, lighting up. I'm lighting up. Oh, you mortals. You're so funny sometimes. Oh God, are you are you, are you done? <laughs> <laughs> I, I do adore that. Like, even if Yofi was here, he probably wouldn't be in the same boat as Rarick of just like you're just figuring this out now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, uh, let's. I think we figured out which one of us needs the meditation. <laughs> <laughs> and... um... Yeah. Let's go buy, we'll buy some chocolate, buy some tea, buy some meditation, and be on our guards. Let's go get a soul. <laughs> and it's All at right. this point that we will end the episode. So thank you all for coming and listening. Hopefully we will have Yofi back very soon, and the adventures with Arthur will continue. But for now, I will see all of you next week. Yeah.